Welcome to Caillou Talks. I am Caillou Ninja, and I am super pumped for my guest today. And talk about one of my favorite activities, video games. Let's cut to the chase. Today we're going to talk about Mark and Emily Kilpatrick, the founders of Affinity Esports. They were on a mission to refine the gaming world, blending wellness, education, and inclusivity into every aspect of esports. They are committed to leading a movement, creating a balanced and nurturing environment where gamers of every age and background can excel in both gaming and life. Steve Harvey said, don't hate the player, change the game. And that's exactly what my guests today are all about. Hey Emily. Hey Mark. Thank you so much for coming here. It really, it, I really appreciate it. So, let's cut to the chase. First part of this question is, talk to me. Tell me your story. How did this all, how did this, how did this, how did this great esports start and begin? Well, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're excited to be here. And honored to be here. I really Absolutely. appreciate, I really appreciate it, guys. So the, the origin story is kind of interesting, actually. <laughs> Um, I think it probably starts with both, um, for Emily and I, kind of the experience we each had with video games. And games in general. Games in general. Yeah. So I grew up as a competitive gamer, and Emily grew up as... A board gamer. <laughs> a board gamer, <laughs> and, and more of a casual game yes. player. The perfect pair. <clears throat> the perfect pairing. <laughs> we complimented each other. Um, I... Uh, Played very competitively growing up, and during the pandemic, um, I was previously in like an enterprise technology kind of really corporate work setting. We both were. We both yeah. were. Yeah, we worked together, and um, I think that came with a lot of learning experiences, and it was really, really interesting for us. But what we realized is we really wanted to build community, and we really wanted an opportunity to leverage something we love um, and to make a change. And uh, so we, uh, during the pandemic, I think actually I originally got back into gaming competitively. And through that experience, I started to engage with a lot of high schoolers and college age kids. And I realized that there was an opportunity for us to really change the narrative around gaming and esports. Because there's a lot of negativity in it. And that made me really uncomfortable when I came back and I was playing. And so we took that opportunity. Uh, we had just moved to Newtown, Connecticut. And what we realized was, why don't, why do we try to build something really big and try to make a lot of money? Like, that's not what we were all about. What we really wanted to do was we wanted to say, we're here in Newtown, Connecticut, um, not too far from this studio right here. Why, why don't we just build a studio out and prove our concept? Let's uh, build a community first yeah. and make that our priority. And then once that it's solidified, we can start expanding to the rest of Connecticut. Yeah, and so that's exactly what we did. We saw an opportunity to change all of the negative stigmas around gaming, the negativity around screen time, and the content within video games. And girls within gaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The view that um, gaming was just for boys, um, that it's sedentary. It doesn't have to be. It can't be the 19th century all over again. <laughs> it can't be the 19th right. century all over again. So we started by launching our studio, and we launched in 400 square feet in Newtown, Connecticut in April of 22. So we're coming up on two years. And we started by just working with parks and recreation in the town, and we started with a Rocket League camp. Yep. And we had six kids in our first Rocket League camp. I think we did Rocket League and then League of Legends camp. Yeah. We're the first League of Legends. Games. Oh, it's a fun game. It's a, a hero-based MOBA. It's a hero-based, yeah. Oh, well, can, you, can you please tell me more about this? Yeah, it's a, so <laughs> League of Legends is a 5v5 game where you actually get to pick a hero. And they and, have over like hundreds, like a hundred and... 130. Something uh, yeah. heroes. That you and they all have different from. abilities yeah. and you work as a team to basically try and take over the other person's side of the map. It's really, really cool. I'll ask my mom to look into that. That sounds good. <laughs> it actually looks pretty intriguing. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. So let me just be the first to say what you did to work here is very beautiful and very thoughtful. And I truly am, and I truly respect that of you too. That was very kind of, and selfless of you. And it really warms my heart to see you at people, that there's people like you in this in this world. And Thank I, you, Kyle. And I, very, Thank I you. very like that. Oh, we appreciate it. Well, and also, did this happen, like, before you two came together? 
or did it, it before? Oh, that's before we became married. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we've been married for how many years? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. 2017. Now. <laughs> so we've been married for seven years. Seven years. We've and been together for twelve. Yeah, and so we did a lot of things before we started an esports yeah. company. But one thing we really did like doing is playing games together. Mm. Well, what was your favorite game to play together? Ooh. We cribbage. Card games. Yeah, card cribbage. Games. Rummy, yeah. cribbage, and board games too. Like, what's the mm. train one? Oh, yeah, Ticket, Ticket to, to Ride. Ride. Yeah, we really like that one. Oh, about any video games that you'd like to play together? That's So that's a new development for it us. Is. We play a lot of video games together. We, we play a little bit of League of Legends, mm-hmm. but mostly we play Valorant. Yeah. Who's well, that game? I haven't it's, heard about that. It's before. a combat-based game. Yes. So it's combat a hero-based combat game. It's well, tell me more. <laughs> Um, it's, a, again, a 5v5 game. So you're mm-hmm. in a team. Yeah. You're collaborating. You're communicating effectively um, with your teammates. And every single agent in the game has a different ability. Yeah. And so you're able to work. There's a, probably five or six different maps that can be selected. And there's attackers and defenders. And in the game, you play one half of each side. And it's really fast-paced. It's mm-hmm. a lot of fun. requires good communication and really good teamwork skills. Yeah. That's important within esports, though, isn't it? As you found when you're playing Minecraft or you're doing building with other people. Yeah, teamwork. Yeah, there was this world with Matt World, Max World. That's his name, and he was like, we were like underground, and there was this one time where I fell into a warden's town, and I was like, what the what? Am, what the what am I supposed to do? And what I was I like, do? I tried to call Matt, but he's just like, where are you? And I was like, deep dark, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and that's in that. And I learned communication the hard way. Like the warden that came over and he was, and I was like, I'm dead. Oh, no. <laughs> because I, 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 cause I forgot, cause I like put all my stone tools in the, in my, in my, in the chest back at home. And I was like, I had to fight him barehanded. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then, but then I, but I, I, I died in like two seconds. Oh, you didn't make it through that. That one, was huh? the lowest point of my Minecraft league. Minecraft career. Yeah. <laughs> well, it can only go up from there, Caillou. But, that, but that's when I learned that team communication is vital, especially the video games, um, especially when you're very competitive. We two competitive people right here. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I will do anything to win. <laughs> I will, I'll tell you what. People often overlook how important communication and teamwork and the other skills that you learn through gaming and esports are. And those are people I do not. I do not really. I don't like those type of people. I don't like these type of people that don't trust the people they have. They don't understand. They don't express their feelings very correctly. Those are the people I don't like because if you don't, you'll just, you'll end up with a sad life. And that's why I don't, and that's why I don't want for my, for my life. You, yeah. you want people to understand the power of video games, right? But people yeah. can always learn too. We've had a lot of people in our studio who've learned those skills and have mm-hmm. grown from them. And now mm-hmm. they're great to play with. That's, oh, and, and, the and the parents. It's amazing well, to see yeah. the parents come along. Oh, yeah. I wa- yeah, I watched your video. Family game night <laughs> to the max. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, three generations at one at, at one family game night is pretty amazing. That was really cool to see. It sounds like you had a very exciting and wonderful life building esports. And so that, re- that reminds me of one question. What were the lessons, like life-changing lessons that you learned together through this wonderful journey of building Vandy Sports? Oh, my. Yeah. That's a good question. Uh, we've learned a lot, I think, about ourselves um, and yeah. our relationship. So that's Aww. that's the first thing. Yeah, pick- I will say we used to work together in a very different setting. Yep. So we thought it was going to be very easy to just start a company and do it together. And we learned the hard way that that's not necessarily how it was going to go. And now – We've grown and we learned new ways to adapt and work together, mm-hmm. and that's been super beneficial. It has. It takes. It takes patience. Um, it takes a lot of um, listening. Listening, and you have to understand <laughs> that things are going to change all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So your expectations don't always work out. So we've gotten really comfortable with things changing as we grow the business. Comfortable chaos. Comfortable chaos. How did you get all this help? It was like when I first came to esports, it wasn't just you two. It was like there was Coach Slab, Jaden. Oh, yeah. uh, J- yeah. Jaden, Coach Slab and Jaden are solid. <laughs> <laughs> he will be so happy you said that, Coach Slab, because he, he said, What? Caillou's running a, a podcast? I want to be on Caillou's podcast. He was so pumped. He was pumped. 
Too yeah. bad it too bad it was it it wasn't him. He must <laughs> I'll let him know. He must yeah. have been so frustrated. He was well, it's because he cares about you. Yeah. And he and he loves what you're doing. Well, well. Coach Lab, if you're watching this, I I I appreciate you too. Thank you for thank you for helping me in esports. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah. That's pretty That's amazing. Great. I love that. Um, Seriously, how'd you get all this help? And it wasn't just the two of you when I came in, it was like loads of people. Yeah, yeah, we we're it, so lucky to have grown our team with such an amazing group of people. Yeah. Um yeah. No, it's um you know what I, I think it is, Caillou, is when you believe in something and you're passionate about it, yeah. that's contagious, right? And um we have been so lucky that we had belief in what we were building. And mm-hmm. we were able to find other people that also believed that gaming and esports could be used for good. Mm-hmm. And so the community that we're surrounded by, our junior staff, our senior staff, yeah. some of our advisors for the business, they're all people that believe in what we're building. Yeah. And we now have a community that people not just want to work for, right? They actually believe in the mission. Yeah. And they're really excited to be there and be part of the community. And they believe in the projects we're working on and the way in which we're growing. So that's I think in part how we found such great people. And now those great people are attracting more talent and more really amazing people. So we're very lucky. We are. Yeah. So you had, so how did you, did you have, were all these like your friends or did you just meet them and they had different, they had the same type of likes and dislikes? That's a really good question. So one, one um, of our uh, kind of big team members was, a lot of different stories. One was a parent of ours who yeah. came in, um, and I'll never forget. She came in. She brought her son <laughs> in. She was she was a little bit shy, and it took about three to four, maybe even six months for her to open up and say, "Oh, I like gaming too." I like gaming too. Yeah. Um, and that turned into her being a, a parent within our community to actually working with us. Um, Slap, who you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. Slap uh, goes to college for gaming and esports management. If you can believe that, he's oh, getting yeah. a degree. Holy a minor, and he's a communications major, but a minor in gaming and esports management. He's a shoutcaster for Post University, so we partnered with Post University. That's how we found Slap. Yeah. Um, you were talking about Jaden, Coach Jaden. He's at Newtown High School, so he was just a local kid. His mom called us one day, Came and, in, she, yeah. and she said, can he come in and play play Valorant? Um, I really want him to meet some people that have uh, like-minded interests. And so he came in and played with us, and he hasn't left since. No. We see Jaden four or five times a week. <laughs> that Jaden. And then, and then a lot of other stories, too. I've had people from my soccer group join. Yeah. So people we find people everywhere. LinkedIn. Yep. People just happen to come in and say, we saw you guys on Facebook, and now I'm here. I guess you, too, and the Fit Esports are living proof that when you work hard, anything can happen. <laughs> we'd, like, we'd like to think so. A lot yeah. of work to do, but we, we're very fortunate. So what do you, how do you think you made an impact on your community? Oh, so we, a lot of different ways. Yeah. Um, we've, we've partnered with local nonprofits. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. We've started to change the narrative. And like I said, we first launched in Newtown, Connecticut. So locally and, and also in Bethel and Brookfield and Danbury where we're running programs, we're changing the narrative around gaming and esports. So we're helping people understand the good that it can bring into their lives. Mm-hmm. We're helping community leaders understand the good that it can bring. Um, And across the state, we're starting to also build connections for uh, schools, Mm -hmm. other nonprofits, um, colleges and universities so that we can continue to grow gaming and esports and make sure that people see it as a positive pursuit. We've also done some fundraisers and we did an autism. uh, You did a soccer tournament um, to help raise funds for was it not uh, uh, LLS? LLS, that's yeah. what it was. So we've we've done a lot of yeah we've yeah. raised money for cancer research, cancer research. Alzheimer's research. Association. That's right. Um, we've we've donated to local nonprofits. Yep. So all things that um, we love doing. It's really exciting, but it also um, kind of on the peripheral and and the the, the follow on effect is that it changes and gives people more information on gaming and esports. And I look at it like the ripple effect. Every person we impact, whether it be your mom or you, Caillou. Um, anybody, um, they go out and they spread the message around, well, maybe maybe this is a little bit different or maybe there is something to this. Yeah. So that's where we like to focus on where we're making a difference. Well, that is really amazing. You know what? My taking all of this 
is just undescribable, very beautiful, and this is just an amazing part. I mean, when I came to Infinity Sports, I was so nervous thinking that this was like, thinking that this will I'll just like be playing video games for like until my dad comes back. And but I but seriously, that was you really surprised me with all you maybe go on a nature walk, go outside, had a out lunch outside, you maybe go outside in nature and maybe feel very inclusive, very fun, very very I I think I said fun too much. Very <laughs> happy, very excited. It made me feel very it made me feel like gaming is not all about all about cyber a chance of cyberbullying. It made me feel it made me feel like it made me feel like uh See, I can't even find the meaning of it. Well, I think you, you, it made yeah. you feel included. Um, it got you excited. You got to meet a lot of great people. And um, you mentioned cyberbullying. I think when you look at um, how much negativity it can be online, oh, yeah. um, we're, we're subjected to it. Kids are subjected to it. And we really need more organizations. And we're not the only one out there. We need more organizations and more communities pushing back on people being negative within the gaming and esports space. So when you walk through the doors of Affinity, we want you to feel like you're a part of a community you're and you're safe accepted. and accepted. You're going to learn about balance and yep. healthy gaming. So balance that's really is a important. huge thing. We don't want you just sitting on a computer and playing. We want you to be able to socialize and have fun, go out and experience nature, and then come back and have fun gaming as well. It's about all of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's been very wonderful having this interview with you. I am very grateful that I ha that that image brings such great, honest, and wonderful people right now. You are really amazing. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having us. We really loved being here. Kyle, you're you're amazing, yeah. and we appreciate you. Thanks for being a part of the community. Right back at you guys. Now the real torture begins. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> Sorry. No, I can't do it. Is it booger? No, rotten egg. Okay, buttered well, popcorn. Wait, yep, it is rotten popcorn. Okay, so which All one right, do you have so to get, the Emily? Yellow one. The yellow one. Oh my! I am so scared. Okay, you got this. You got this. It's not gonna be bad. Is that, is that that one? Is this yellow? It's, no. It's, it's just yeah, they're the same. Oh rot. Okay, here. Take this oh, one. Oh god, I could already Take smell that one. it. Okay. Give me that one. They both Four. smell really bad. Mm. You can do this. I believe in you. No, the whole thing. You can do it. You can do it. Go. Come on. You got this. I don't no. Don't, don't, don't take swallow it. it. Don't drink it. Don't, don't drink it. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. We can do this. We can do this. <laughs> Think about everything we've been through. You can do this. I am no. The, I'm the bean boozle <laughs> champion. Oh my. Oh, oh my gosh. That okay. is awful. We, we have a... <laughs> oh can, can someone get a bucket, please? Can someone get a oh. bucket or something? Oh. Barf in the cup. Barf in the cup. Barf yeah. in the cup, sweetie. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm Has not thinking about it. anybody up yet? Ooh. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Did you swallow you it? Go. Oh, hole. Oh. <laughs> is that the smell that I'm smelling? Is it these? Is it these? Oh my... Why does it oh, smell? Oh, I can taste the stink bug. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna spin it for you. Okay. Oh, is it my turn? Yep. Oh. Oh. And Mark has Juicy Pear Burger. <laughs> That's so gross. I can't believe this is actually a thing. If it's chewy, then it's burger. If it's if it's not chewy, then it's pear. Oh, I so, really so hope it could it's be, burger. Oh, it could be pear. I get what's happening yes. here. Okay. Let's oh, I hope it's burger. If it's chewy, it's burger. No, it's pear. Oh my gosh, that's so unfair. What was yours? Rotten egg. Oh Please yeah. Please okay. leave marshmallow or All right, Kai. Oh wait, that was a misfire. Oh, that's a good one. Oh one. god. <laughs> oh, I got the lucky one. Toothpaste or blueberry? Oh, that's easy. Oh, that's an easy one. Blueberry. Nice. All oh right. my gosh, I'm gonna get unlucky here. I'm so Ooh. scared. Okay. That pear was pretty good. So is blueberry. Oh, why do I, I can't? Give that, it a good flip. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. Hold wait, the wait. corner. There you go. Nice. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. 
What is it? Old bandage? Ew. Ooh. Or pomegranate? They're both good. They're both good. <laughs> <laughs> If it's chewy, you gotta it's, do the whole thing. If it's uh, chewy and chunky, it's what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nope. No, no, no. She surrendered. <laughs> I do. Oh, God. Oh, you had it. No, no, <laughs> no. Oh, no. You go. Oh, you go, man. Lava Boy. This, this makes me so Thank happy. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Kevin, Why does it linger? <laughs> it lingers. Have a candy, too. <laughs> oh, cat. Cappuccino or liver and onion? Oh, I hope you get liver and onions. I hope it's Did cappuccino. Did you, you pick good for me? Cappuccino is bad too. <laughs> I I don't know about that. You're struggling. Is it liver and onions? Is it cappuccino? Mm -mm. No, it's definitely liver and onions. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Whatever you do, no, don't. I actually, I actually had my hit talk, my gag don't talk. Don't talk. They say, they say, they say, every, if you eat liver and onions, your breath sounds smells like raw fish eggs and it's an, actually, out, an outdated cereal. It's <laughs> making me shiver. Mm. You want some water? Oh, he's not bad. I thought it was cappuccino for a second, and I was like, oh, that is Wait not cappuccino. Please. That's so gross. Ah, I got two paste again. I have to learn your technique because I would take toothpaste over all of these. I don't know. Toothpaste on. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Sorry, I'll eat you back. Mm. My birthday cake or dirty dishwater? Oh mm. my gosh, these sound so gross. Also, I found a marshmallow one. Oh yeah. Here you go. No, 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 no. I am quite all right. Thank you. you. We'll do it for you. <laughs> you know the gross version of it? You got to do yours first, though. You want? You know hey, what the gross you. version hey, is? You. Yo. Stink bug. I think yours was dirty dishwater. Do yours. <laughs> do yours, man. I tricked him. <laughs> all right, toothpaste guy. Do yours. Where's mine? I'll do it with you if you find yours. Oh, there it is. One, two, Ready? three. Which one did you give me? Stink ah. bug. Mm, it's not stink bug. It's the other thing. It's good. <laughs> Was it bubble gum? Marshmallow. No, marshmallow. Marshmallow, yeah. I'm safe. <laughs> How's yours? I think it's your dish water. <clears throat> oh my gosh. It like lingers. It just lingers in the back of your mouth. Whoa. All right. Guys. What do you say to your guests? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you for having us. That was a lot of fun. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to be terrified of jelly beans for a long oh, time Oh, I'm getting now. this for the studio now. <laughs> it's a literal digital jungle out there between cyberbullying, gaming addiction, and contact that can be kind of crazy. It's tough navigating it all. And let's be honest, each generation has a different experience with technology. And my generation is the one that has the most use of technology. So for parents, it's hard to understand it all. And sometimes when we're scared, it's easier for us to demonize something instead of us trying to understand it and see the good in it. I believe that Mark and Emily are trying to help kids and parents navigate that sp the space to find the balance. They're helping parents understand what they fear and helping kids be more responsible about their passion. They are truly breaking the mold and having an impact in the gaming community in their own way. And this is what this show's all about, people. Sharing new ways to, of thinking with you. Great stories of people who are going against the grain. And Mark and Emily are great examples of that. I was able to go to their summer camp last year, and I was actually surprised. My parents even agreed to it. But as the days went by, I realized that I got to take nature walks. We got to interact with each other. We weren't just gaming all the time. It was a great experience for me and all the other kids. As someone who's autistic, I, it was also an environment that I felt welcomed and I was able to connect with one another, people. So the gaming world, yes, can be very dark and dangerous, but it's also 
can be an awesome place for community where people are not judging you other than on your skill and your ability to connect with them and have fun. So as we said before, don't hate the player, change the game. And that's what's something that Mark and Emily are doing. Anyway, see you next time on the next How You Talks.